All right, coming up here on Great TV, we are talking turkey. Turkey. Happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Fire it up. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, meatheads. It is another episode of Great TV from the birthplace of American barbecue, low country Ooh. of South Carolina. Here we are. Jack Waybor is here, three-time South Carolina state champion, and I'm Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. And yeah, I know we're in, you know, we're we had, we, we are. We, we're not quite to a year of doing these shows, and we finally hit a point where we've run out of daylight. To That's do right. These. Da daylight Either savings. we're working too much, or... Uh, or we're just, you know, it's getting cold. It's so. hard to shoot these things in the dark. And by golly, we have set up quite a studio. Live from the basement. <laughs> there are no basements in Charleston, Bill. Live from the... It's not... I can't even say it's the man cave. From the ground floor. If it were the man cave, it would be... Yeah, I know. The daylight basement. If there were daylight. So here's the ground floor work. I am uh, enjoying a Bud Light today because you deserve what every individual should enjoy regularly. Budweiser. Cheers. And I'm... I'm sticking with the mothership, mothership wit from last. Uh, we we had some left over from last week, and uh, I just like it. This is very hoppy, and you said there's some sort of spice. I in think there, it's clove, like Bill. It. I think uh, mothership ought to write us a letter and uh, thank us for endorsing their product and tell us what the spice is. Uh, yeah, I love I love some of these beers. Little, uh, We're coming up with all kinds of stuff. Lucky there's a uh, high end grocery store right down the street down here. We can pick these things up on the way in. There you go. Um, let's get right to our our emails. We like getting them at. Jack at GreatTV.com or Bill at GreatTV.com. Yep, send us the emails. We love them. Uh, Jack and Bill love pork, but have been trying turkey lately. Has anyone barbecued, does, has anyone barbecued a turkey for Thanksgiving? <laughs> Signed, Sam from Chicago. And actually, I did it last year. Sam, uh, thanks for writing in. Of course, we uh, love to get the letters and keep them on rolling on in. Uh, I would say smoked turkey is probably one of those things that uh, everybody does right around the holidays. The only problem I have with a smoked turkey is finding a paper big enough to wrap around it. <laughs> Just kidding, Bill. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> finding a paper. Yeah. Ha. Ha. But anyway, uh, smoked turkey is, uh, is uh, plentiful and very good to do around the holidays. Uh, I prefer it to frying. Uh, when you fry a turkey, you got uh, a $4 turkey that you put it in uh, $30 worth of oil, and you end up with a $35 turkey for your Thanksgiving dinner. And certainly that is not particularly what I'd like to do. Being I, Thanksgiving, that would have been a good gadget because I've seen some of the, the, the fryers now sure. that you can just, that looked really cool to me that they don't take up a lot of oil. That's right. And they're safe. And I'm like, that's going to save a lot of house fires there because, or, or patios catching on fire because... That just seems like too much. Mess. Yeah, it's a, it's a, tur fried turkey is great. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy it every fried turkey that I've ever had, but I prefer turkey smoked. Uh, if you really want to try something special, try smoking a turkey for about three or four hours and then drop it into the fryer and have it smoke fried. Well, oh, really? Yeah. Well, I do something a little different, but getting back to the smoking of it, how do you get the skin right? Because I've tried actually smoking the turkey and maybe I just haven't given enough time because... I've had the rubbery skin. <clears throat> I think I don't think you can get the skin right on a turkey because you got to keep the temperature down on it a little bit. Um, certainly, the only way to, to treat skin on a turkey is to get the temperature up. But when you get the temperature up on a turkey, you have around 325, 350, somewhere in there, you're going to dry the breast out, especially when you're cooking it on the grill like so that. So that's why I use my method. That I've started doing rotisserie. That's right. Turkey, which is fantastic. It is. It is a good way to do it. You got to have the rotisserie set up. Sure. But, uh, Really pretty easy. I mean, just like a chicken. Sure. I've, I've been shocked how easy it's been. That's right. And we'll put a little pan of uh, kind of parboiled potatoes right. and, and, and carrots and things like that underneath. So the drippings, really good way to go. Yeah, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, you can help your turkey out a lot. You can use an injection. Um, my favorite injection recipe, we'll post it up on the board. Um, I use equal parts, uh, one part hot sauce, one part uh, butter and one part white grape juice. We had white grape juice on two shows ago, mm -hmm. and I promised everybody that I would tell them why, what my secret ingredient for white grape juice was. Um, actually, it's a recipe that I kind of modified from a fellow named Kid Anderson who lives in Michigan, uh, and his original injection recipe for me, or to the group that I was hanging out with at that point in time, was one part 
butter, one part hot sauce, and one part white Zinfandel. But uh, I'm not a big white Zinfandel fan, and, and I find that yeah. uh, getting into the white wine and stuff like that, it's just, it's hard, and especially, you know, finding a good wine that you want to put in there. And I found white grape juice to be a great substitute for a white wine and goes right into the turkey. Um, everybody thinks I'm nuts when I tell them this recipe. They say, man, you can't, white grape juice, what are you kidding me? And I got to tell you, before you criticize it, You almost try think it. it's, it's going to taste like candy. It does like not. It's a great recipe. So that's an injection. That's an injection. Why don't we get our, our ingre secret ingredient this week is a brine. A brine. Which he, I have done before, brined it. Actually brined the turkey that I right. smoked that one time or two, and the skin was real rubbery. Sure. Tell me about brining and what's some of the tricks to it. Well, the, the rubber skin doesn't come from the brining methods. Uh, brining is actually uh, just what it is. It's salt and water. Um, and it's actually a, a more or less an osmotic exchange that happens in the cell structures in the in the cell of the turkey itself. The 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 brine, the water, the moisture from the from the brine is moving into the cell and actually inflating the moisture inside the cell structures itself of the meat of the meat. So it's actually making it moist. You have you have more moisture when you brine. You have more moisture in the meat to start with. Now we all know that cooking moisture is actually being pushed out of the meat while we're cooking. So what, what you're doing with a brine is having more moisture to start with. So when you come to the ending temperature, the finished temperature of your bird, hopefully there'll be moisture left within the meat itself. It definitely does. I've heard some people accuse brining of making the bird uh, mushy. Is mushy. that the right? Yeah, it can. Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta play with brines. Uh, and there's a ton of different brines out there. You can you can go down to any cookbook, any website, anywhere, anywhere, and find a bunch of different brine recipes. Uh, you know, gallon of water, cup of salt is uh, you know the rule of thumb to start with. Uh, I like to use sugar in there uh, in, in a brine. Certainly, sugar helps to stop the flow of of so much salt going into the into the into the uh, cells of the meat. However, it's not really stopping the salt from going in. What it's doing is tempering the salt down a little bit. Okay. Um, the sugar is helping it be more palatable, not be so salty. Okay. Um, and then you want to ride in, uh, you know, it, along with it, you're going to ride in all your spices. Uh, certainly, we've talked about tarragon and chicken. We've talked about, you know, Worcestershire sauce. We've talked about soy sauce. I used we've orange juice. About orange mind. juice. We've talked about a lot of things. The, the salt water solution, it, everything kind of, rides onto that salt water and rides on into the meat of the chicken and that's how it all that's how the exchange is made um, so, so brining is a wonderful way to go so you but not not necessarily for everybody uh, no certainly not uh, you know some people like to inject some people like to brine i tell you what i i rarely do poultry anymore without a brine in it uh, just because uh, the way they're making poultry these days is just you know uh, they're just growing it so fast and the hormones are so are, are in it so much that they're actually making chicken drier than it should be. Have you seen Food Inc? I have seen Food Inc. I, sort of, I, I can't get that chicken out of my mind. It, it's huge. <laughs> it does. Um, we'll but, have to talk about that another Yeah, but when, you know, you watch out for your turkeys. Uh, certainly a lot of your turkeys already come pre-brined. Uh, anything that you buy uh, from the grocery store that says uh, solution okay. added, it, you know, the, that 10% or whatever it is solution added, that is brine. So, so it's, already been, it's not going to help. It, it may help a little bit, but not going to help a lot. You're better off, in my opinion, with a pre, uh, with a pre uh, pumped turkey, you're better off to inject than you are to brine. All right. All right. Brine. Just, a, just one of my things. Go for it. Try something different. This yeah, man, brine your turkey for Thanksgiving. You'll love it. Uh, let's get our uh, great plate on. And I love this. Uh, it's, it's posted right now at greattv.com. They write, Thanksgiving is coming soon, so I had a uh, practice, cooked a practice turkey on my big green egg this weekend. Awesome. Look at it there. It is beautiful. I love the show. I look forward to your show about the big green egg. Signed, Kirk Muncrief in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's cool. I'll tell you what. Thanks, Kirk. Uh, that's a beautiful looking turkey and uh, certainly... Uh, you do you know, have a big green, big green egg? I do not. I do not have a ceramic cooker at all, but it is on my... Christmas list. But you've got too many I cookers. Ha at this I point. have a lot of cookers and uh, Mary won't allow me to get another one. Uh, <laughs> certainly, uh, I'm certain that if Primo or Big Green Egg would sponsor, uh, you know, a Great TV and send us a cooker, I could probably hey, keep I'll it in the backyard. I'll take La Cajachina <laughs> if they want to sponsor us. 
I know that's not that's a lot cheaper than a big green egg, right? <laughs> big green eggs are wonderful cooker. We talked about ceramic cookers, and I think we should probably get ceramic cookers together and talk about all the ins and outs and pros and cons of all the different kind of cookers that are out there. Um, I, you know, ceramic cookers uh, have their uses. I would say poultry would be one of the great things to use in a ceramic cooker. They are so tight and so efficient. It's amazing what you can do with a ceramic cooker. There you go. Uh, good, good shot. Thank you, uh, Kirk, for sending that in. It is beautiful. And one more thing, our website of the week this week, uh, since we're uh, uh, on Thanksgiving time, Butterball.com. Butterball.com will have all the information you could possibly imagine for cooking your turkey. Um, and I think uh, Butterball actually on the .com probably has the 800 number in case you should get in trouble with your turkey and need some advice yeah, on you know, there's all how to get it of, done. You know, making sure it's done and advice there. I got to tell you, you know, when you're cooking a turkey, the best way, you know, I've had 100 people come up and say, you know, what's the best way to cook a turkey? Well, how about this? Uh, read the directions that come with a turkey. That may be a good place to start. <laughs> Can you do the pop-up thermometer on a grill? Yes. Or will it melt? <laughs> you know, you can do it. But the first thing I do with a pop-up thermometer is pull it out. So, oh, really? Yeah, I use a temperature gauge. It's the only way to tell whether it's really done. You Truly. Use your, words use, your, of wisdom use your thermometer. From Jack Wable. Where are you, uh, where are you cooking next? Let's talk about a secret. Uh, let's oh, talk about we got, the, we got the, gadget. Uh, the gadget of the week, though, before we sign out. Sorry. This is the William Sonoma gift set, and it is a beautiful one. That's a good one. Check this out. William Sonoma ought to be able to uh, get on in here, too, for some reason, you know. What a beautiful gift set. Uh, I believe this was given to uh, cameraman Tony Coombs as a wedding gift, he told me. It oh, comes yeah? complete with everything you could possibly imagine. has the uh, the knife, which is beautiful. It's got a hook on the end and everything. The fork, the basting brush, the spatula, and a set of tongs. That's what a beautiful fancy. piece that is. Huh? Everything's all uh, real nice in here, all set in. and It's in a beautiful carrying case. What a nice gadget. It's a machete. I would say that's probably good. What I like about it, Bill, is that everything's long. So when you're getting onto the grills, you can, you know, kind of get in there and not have to be so close that you burn yourself. Have you used this yet? You haven't used it yet. <laughs> Tony's working the camera. I love this, though. That's I beautiful. don't really have an immediate need for it, although you could chop. Rosewood handles, all you know, heavy carbon steel, real nice. William Sonoma does it good. Yeah, William Sonoma does good stuff. And they got a store right here in town. Right here in Charleston. Wonderful stuff. Uh, that's it. Now I can ask, where are you cooking next? Uh, we're actually going to take some time off. We're going to do a little, uh, winter, uh, you know, siesta here. Uh, we're going to look for the spring. Of course, uh, Carolina Pitmasters will be the first thing that happens in the spring. Uh, and we're going to announce a date for Carolina Pitmasters right soon. Carolina Pitmasters what? The barbecue cooking school. Yes. Oh, we're going to be gonna announcing a soon. date for that okay. soon. Excellent. We love that. Yeah. And uh, all right, until next time, send us your uh, great plates, send us your emails, and subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Until next time. Stay sustainable. Hug your mama. Have a good day. Cheers, cheers.